would stay still. I'm hungry. Hey, everybody! Look what we have! Tree stars! We pick them using our hands. <laughs> They're so handy. Oh, hey! All I see is the day in front of us. All I see is the day in front of us. Burning bright with a newborn sun. Come fall on me. Hills to climb and valleys to roam. Oh, streams to follow all the way home. To the land before time. Just hiding, you know, until the wind settled down. Hi, Guido. Remember me and Ruby? We met you the last time you babysat Trisha. Chomper, the friendly sharp tooth. <laughs> How could I forget? <laughs> You're still friendly, right? Yep. You still learning to fly? Oh, that. Well, <laughs> being a glider, it is kind of hard to get off the ground without a, a little help. Maybe big blowy wind give you lots of help. See, like whoa, whoa, whoa. But uh, it's really blowy. It'll be okay, Guido. Petrie will help you. Me will. Oh, oh, yes, me will. Well, I really would like to fly. Should have stayed in my stump. You can do it, you good glider. Well, that's really nice of you to say, but and whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, wings, oh, oh, Guido, whoa. wings! What? Oh, right, wings! <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Blowy make you fly good. Yeah, it does kinda, doesn't it? Now, follow me. Follow, he says. It getting too blowy. We done now. Oh yeah, but I wanna. Hey, wait! Oh, come on, Petrie, let's do it again. I've got a twisty turn one more time. Oh, come on, Petrie, please, 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 please. <laughs> mm -mm, no, too blowy now. We fly tomorrow. <gasps> tomorrow? But my wings are all warmed up now. No, not safe. I thought blowy was good. You see? It's okay! First, I swoop! Uh, oh, boy. Oh, boy! Whoa! Whoa! What is he doing? Why is he going up so high? Hey, wind! Stop! Whoa! Help! Oh, me better help.
the grown-ups. Ah, so, so tired. Listen, I think the wind stopped. Inside Black Rock. <gasps> Black Rock? Oh, that's not good. I know. Mind helping me up? Ugh. Okay. Ow, 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 wow. Ooh. Ooh, I must have landed funny on my foot. Yes, I. Oh, ow, oh, oh. <laughs> and Mino can fly. Yeah, but at least you can walk. <laughs> See if you can find a way out of here, all right? Uh, okay. Oh, too steep. No climb here. <laughs> Petrie! I saw something move. Over there. I may not see anything. It, it, too dark. And I'm afraid of the dark. I'm afraid of caves, but most of all, I'm afraid of being afraid. Guido, you're more scared than me. Don't be, don't be scared. Don't be, don't be scared. It's easier to say than do, but singing helped me know it true. Then I will try to sing with you and not be scared. Oh, it's awfully dark way down here in the black rock. It's very black rock. Maybe it's not so bad if we find an easy way out. Hey, let's just find any way out, okay? Do, 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 don't be, don't be scared. Don't be, don't be scared. Pretend that you'll be brave and strong. You know the tune, so sing along. Hope I don't end up being wrong. Not being scared. <laughs> being scared. Petri, I gotta admit, I'm not as scared as I was. Now I'm more scared! <laughs> it's all this stupid wind's fault. I just hope they find Petri and Guido soon. Oh, oh, I can't look. What's there? Tell me. If it's too scary, don't tell me. Plant. Well, at least you won't starve. Oh, crawlers! You eat too. You feel better. Hmm. Yeah, uh, 
are not bad for cave crawlies. Ah. Uh, Petri? <laughs> you hungry? <gasps> oh, sorry, Phyllis. My manners ain't what they used to be. I don't get many visitors around here. The name is Swooper. Now, I've lived here for a long, long time, but uh, it ain't so bad, you see. I'm not alone. This here is Cliff, and the tall one over yonder goes by Slim, and then the good looker in the corner, why, that's Andy. He has been here a long time. <laughs> why you stay so long? Why? Well, because I'm blind. Petrie's mom looks so tired. <laughs> we can't just sit here. We gotta do something to help. I hate feeling so helpless. <laughs> Say, maybe we can't help Petrie and Guido, but we can help the helpers. You blind? How you get around? Ooh, and that's simple. I memorized every last bit of this place. Between hearing and smelling, why, I can figure out exactly where you fellas get to. <laughs> that's also how I can tell you were eating my ground stars. <laughs> Back home in Great Valley, there's so much food. Everybody friends, everybody happy. The Great Valley, hmm. Why, that sounds like the kind of home I've always dreamed about. Cause I, I could never get there. That trip's too risky for a blind old flyer like me. Oh, me wish we'd take you there. Oh, oh but me still no can fly. Guido still hurt and you no see. Oh, we never get back to Great Valley. Yep, 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 yep. If we tried to walk there, a sharp tooth would get us for sure. You know, there might be a way. What if you fly while Petri and I ride on your back? We could be your eyes. Ooh, I don't know. It sounds risky. Mighty risky. I'd have to think long and hard before I'd give that a try. Well, I've made up my mind. I'm sure gonna miss you two. I'm heading for the Great Valley with my new friends. <gasps> if you're ever out that way, I'll stop by and visit you here. If you ask me, home that way. Well, let's get a going. Hop on. Swooper, uh, when exactly was the last time you flew? Oh, let me see now. It was so long ago. Okay, maybe on second thought. We yeah! <laughs> Here we go! to flying again, you know. <laughs> now, which way? Uh, 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 well, uh, 
Okay, uh, point your beak a little left. Ooh, oh, 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 oh. Wait! Uh, yeah, okay, that's good. That's the fastest way in the valley. No, 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 still too blowy. Fly around, go right, left, right, left, right, left, right! Oh, fellas, if we're gonna get anywhere, we gotta work together. Okay, Swooper's right. You've flown more, Petri. You decide which way. Uh, Guido help too. Uh, use your wings. Feel for change in wind. I can do that. Oh, that's better. Especially since I can only go in one direction. <laughs> you some tree stars. We gathered enough for all the flyers. We wanted to help. Thank you all very much. I haven't had much time for food since... Oh, do not be sad. Petrie will come home. He will. He will. I know, little one. They'll both be home just as soon as the wind stops and we can go find them. I just hope they're safe. <sighs> Whew. I haven't flown this long in ages. What say we land so as I can take a load off? We got a problem. I'm not sure how long I can keep going. Well, then Petrie fly. Make easy for Swooper. Oh, oh, oh. oh you're not ready to fly, Petrie. I guess I'll have to glide for a while. You, you sure? Well, one of us has to get off Swooper's back, and this trip was my idea. <laughs> You can do it, you good glider. You're right. I can do this. <laughs> hey, hey, this isn't so bad. I'm gonna check things out up higher. Hey, Swooper, Petrie, come on up here. The wind's blowing toward the Great Valley. You can rest your wings. Oh, it does these old bones good to soar again. We'll be getting to your valley in no time. Oh, 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 oh me hope so. It's true! They've been spotted! They've come back to us! Woohoo! We did it, Swooper! We're home! And we never would have made it without you, Guido! You're hurt. A little. Uh, maybe okay. This Swooper, he flew me home. Thank you so much, Swooper. 
glad to do it, ma'am. But the whole idea was Guido's, and he found the wind that helped us get here. We never make it home without wind. Oh, thank you, Guido. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Everyone, let's give Petrie, Guido, and their new... I mean, our new friend, Swooper, a big welcome home. <laughs> Good to be home, all thanks to our new friend. We finally safe now. Our journey is at an end. Take it, Petrie. Okay. It blowy day. Things look pretty. Maybe Tria learned to fly. Oh. <gasps> well, that big surprise. Hello, kids. Nice Hello. to see you, Hi. Tria. So, what's the big surprise? Oh, Sarah, always to the point. Today, I'm taking you to my favorite place in all the Great Valley, my secret getaway. Oh, no. If it's secret, how do we know about it? Because she's going to tell us. Right? Yes, yes, please yes, tell us. Yes. It's my secret mud pool. Huh? We're going to a mud hole? All I see is the day in front of us. All I see is the day in front of us. Burning bright with a newborn sun. Come fall I think you kids are just going to love my secret mud pool. What's to love about mud? Oh, this mud is special. You'll understand when you sit in it. We're supposed to sit in the mud? Mm, and just let yourself go. Ah, it might be nice to go and let myself go. Hmm. <sighs> oh, uh, me think, uh, uh... We were... Uh, in the middle of the game, stop the seed. And we did agree to finish it, right, Ducky? Uh, mud might be nice. Yup, yup, yup. But I know you cannot finish the game without me, so I will stay. <sighs> What's this? Hmm? I thought you'd be off having fun already. Dad, I don't want to go sit in some mud hole. Tria put a lot of thought into this little trip. If you don't go, I'll never hear the end of it. But, Dad... You're going. <sighs> I'll go. <laughs> <sighs> Come on, Sarah. The sooner we go, the sooner we'll be on our way. And the sooner we can have fun. <sighs> Fun and a mud hole? Right. Hmm. 
Here we are. Lovely, isn't it? Being here is even better now that we're here. <laughs> <laughs> it's just mud. <sighs> Me glad we not at mud pool. Me no think mud good for wings. Now! Hey! Me got it! Me got it! Me miss it. Yeah, but I won't. Huh? Look like tooth. Like your tooth, Chomper. My tooth? On the ground? But my teeth are supposed to be in my mouth. Me agree, but that tooth definitely not in that mouth. My tooth! My tooth! My tooth! Does it hurt? No. You think it will? I am sure it will all be okay. Okay? Okay! What's next? An arm? A leg? My tail? Not my tail! What's happening to me? Me never hear of Tooth just falling out. Never? Never? Well, I have. Huh? And I wouldn't get too attached to that tail if I were you. Hmm. Oh, I am certain Chomper is very attached to his tail. Yup, yup, yup. It's true. I am. It starts with a tooth, and before you know it, a fella's turning to bones and falling to pieces. I don't want to turn to bones. It isn't up to you. Mark my words, by nightfall, you'll be nothing but a pile of bones. Wait! How do I get my tooth back in my mouth? Hmm. We could ask Mr. Thicknose. He's heard about all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. You came to the right place, Chopper. I've heard of many ways to stick things together. No reason they wouldn't work on teeth. You think so? Certainly, my boy. Say I an open mind. And I'll take a look inside. With some sticky tree star juice. That old tooth should not come loose. I'll fix your tooth. Flower dust might do the trick. Maybe mud that's nice and thick. You know what? I'm sorry, son. I can't fix this one. Can't fix my tooth? Cannot fix his tooth. Sorry, it's the truth. Too bad it's the truth. He cannot fix your tooth. I am sorry none of my sticky solutions worked. Until today, I've always tried to avoid direct experience with sharp tooth teeth. If only sharp teeth lived here, so I could ask them about teeth. Huh? <gasps> what about Ruby? Ruby? She doesn't have any teeth! But she's lived in the mysterious beyond, where there are lots of sharp teeth. Maybe she has seen this before. You think so? Mm-hmm. Ruby knows many things. She does. She does. Maybe she fixed Tooth. But she's not here. And what if she's not back by nightfall? I could fall totally apart by then. Then we'll just have to go find her before that happens. <laughs> uh, not that it will happen. But... We do not know where the mud pool is. Say, 
chopper good smeller. Maybe he follow Ruby's smell. I'll sure try. What kind of a three horn sits in mud? It's just as silly to sit there and watch, Sarah. Good point. I won't watch anymore. mud pool a while, but I do not know if we are getting there. Maybe that why Tria calls secret mud pool secret. We're okay, as long as Chompers got their scent. <laughs> huh? Sniffer says, then we go in there too. This sure strange place for relaxing. I do not think I would be relaxed in here. No, no, no. <gasps> Oh, it's not so bad. Ouch! Something bite, Petrie. Oh boy! A buzzing buzzer! <laughs> Mino think they taste good, Chopper. Yeah! Mmm, spicy. Well, at least you scared the stinging buzzer away. Oh no, here he comes again. <gasps> and he brought in all of his friends. Run! So boring. I could be with the others having fun. Stinging buzzers not follow us. And we are safe. You fix it. Not if we can't find her. My sniffer led us into that cave. Oh no! Maybe my nose is going to fall off next. <gasps> hey! Why didn't I think of it before? We can use the looking rock. Grandpa says you can see the whole Great Valley from the top.
to fall. It would hurt very much. <laughs> Me scare me. <laughs> Look, the mud pool just beyond the murky swamp. That easy to find. Are you finished relaxing yet? Come on, Sarah. Try dipping in one toe. <sighs> Fine. It's warm. Mmm, that's what makes it so nice. I didn't say it was nice. It's still dumb. Huh? Oh. <laughs> oh. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> this is supposed to make me relax. <laughs> now that you're in, doesn't it feel good? Well, it's better than usual, Mud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh, this place not smell so good. If you lived here, I am sure you would get used to it. Yup, yup, yup. Oh, me not so sure. Right now, it wouldn't be so bad if I lost my nose. Hey! Oh, no! Sinking sand! <coughs> Chopper, get out of there or sinking sand will pull you in. I'm trying. <coughs> <coughs> us if you have sharp teeth or no teeth. That's right. You'll always be our friend, Chomper, no matter what. But what if Mr. Three Horns right and I turn to bones? The mud pools just past those trees. Maybe Ruby knows something. But Chomper does not want you to leave his tooth, even if it is in the sinking sand. Me stay with Chomper. You go find Ruby and others. Thanks, Petrie. We'll be right back with Ruby. Uh, excuse me. Have you seen a fast runner with a spike tail and two three horns? Oh, hi, 
guys. What are you doing here? Sarah? It is you? Sarah, we have to find Ruby. It's important. Uh, follow me, please. Here we are. Ruby! We have been looking for you all day. Yup, yup, yup. Ah, I'm right here. Of course, I'm always here, since here is wherever I am. Chomper needs your help! Huh? He's not far! Come on! Follow us! Follow us! You guys really need to relax. He's right here! Are you okay, Chomper? No. My tooth is gone. Forever! What? You interrupted our relaxing day for a tooth? A tooth? One day I try to relax. You guys come out here and spoil Now, now. I... We're just glad Chomper's not seriously hurt. Not hurt? I'm falling apart. Have you ever seen a sharp tooth with a missing tooth? Oh, yes. Huh? I've seen it more times than I care to see. <gasps> really? Why, sure, Chomper. You're going to lose all your teeth. All of them? Ah! Normal sharp teeth normally lose their teeth. So if you lost your tooth, you're a normal sharp tooth. I'm normal? Here, give me your claw. Feel that? That's your new tooth. New tooth? Yes, new tooth. And this new tooth will be new until you're old. Really? Tree stars change color before the cold times. Wow, that was a great one, Grandpa. Yes, tell us another story so we can listen to it. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, now, let's see. Oh, I know. Once many cold times ago, there was a young longneck named Star Watcher. Every night, he climbed to the top of a hill to look at the sky stars. But one night, the sky stars decided to come down out of the sky. They wanted to take a look at the long neck who was always looking at them. The sky stars said hello to Star Watcher and asked if he would like to visit them up in the sky. Are you sure that's how it happened? Huh? I'm not so sure you're telling that story right. A 
All I see is the day in front of us. All I see is the day in front of us. Burning bright with a newborn sun. Come fall on me. Hills to climb and valleys to roam. Oh, streams to follow all the way home. To the land before time. I think you must be forgetting the stories in your old age. Saro, is that you? It's me, all right. I thought I'd never find you. I can't believe it. After all this time, I'd given up hope. I never gave up. Like green food in cold times, it, it may, may shrink, shrink away, away, but, but it, it will, will always grow, grow back. back. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa? Who is this? Children, I want you to meet an old friend of mine. His name is Saro. It's a pleasure to meet you all. But who's this? A sharp tooth? <laughs> <laughs> That's Chomper. He was hatched by Littlefoot. And now he's living with us. Yeah. I want to learn how different dinosaurs can all get along. Well, you couldn't have found a better teacher. It was good to hear you tell one of the long neck stories again. Grandpa's great at telling stories. Oh, I know. Your grandpa was a great story speaker. Story speaker? What's that? A story speaker would travel the land, telling the great long neck stories to all the long neck herds. And you were a story speaker, Grandpa? Your grandpa was one of the finest story speakers ever. I tried to learn every story I could from him. Oh, well, I, I just wanted everyone to remember our important past. <laughs> Me like stories. <laughs> <laughs> I do too, I do, I do. <laughs> yeah, Grandpa, Sorrow, could you tell us one of the great long neck stories? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think we might be able to remember a story or two. Now, who knows how long necks got their name? Oh, it is because they have long necks. Yep, yep, yep. Everyone knows that. But did you know that long necks didn't always have long necks? They didn't? Many cold times ago, before you or I had hatched, Long necks had short necks. Back then, the trees were very short, so they could eat tree stars from the top of the trees. The trees would sing to the bright circle every day as it crossed the sky. The bright circle liked their song so much that it reached down and pulled the trees until they were very tall. That way, they would be closer to the sky when they sang their bright circle songs. But now, the tree stars were so high that the short-necked long necks couldn't reach them. That night, the night circle felt sorry for them and reached down to comfort them. The light made them feel better. And so, they lifted their heads up to get closer to the night circle. In doing so, their necks stretched enough to reach the tree stars. The kindness of the night circle helped us become long necks. And that is how long necks got their long necks. That was a very good story. Yep, yep, yep.
Looks like talking about tree stars made Spike hungry. <laughs> Must have been great to get to tell stories all the time. It is an honor to tell the great long neck stories. And a very important job. But some of the long necks have begun to forget their stories. That's why you have to come back and be a story speaker again. I, what? Oh, I don't think I can. We'll travel the land, telling everyone the great long neck stories, just like we used to. It, it sounds like a nice idea. So you're going to be the story speaker again, Grandpa? Of course he is. Sorrow, I'm sorry. I know how important the stories are. And I loved being a story speaker, but that was long ago. Things are different now. What do you mean, Grandpa? My place is here in the Great Valley, with you and Grandma and all the others. But you're the story speaker. The Longnecks need you. I need you. I can't tell the stories on my own. Sorrow, I am very sorry. But even though my days of wandering have passed... Then you've turned your back on the long necks and all of our traditions. Sorrow, wait! I have nothing left to say to you. feel bad for sorrow. He's hurt and angry, and I don't want him to feel that way. I had hoped he and I would be able to tell the great stories together. Uh, but those days are long gone. Remembering, remembering, is a kind of a funny thing. It makes me think of time gone by. Friends are made by saying hi. Thoughts I'll always hold dear. Remembering makes reappear. But even when the thoughts are sad, I'll always have remembering. I had hoped Sorrow would someday become a story speaker. He knows the stories as well as I ever did. Why didn't you tell him? Well, I never had the chance. And now Sorrow's too angry to listen to me. Well, it's sad, really. I've already begun to forget some of the long neck stories. I can't let the long neck stories be lost. I've got to find Sorrow. Sarah's footprints lead out into the mysterious beyond. Who? Who is it? <gasps> Come on out. I I'm not scared of you. Why would you be scared of me? Oh, Chomper. I, I was just... What are you doing? I'm following you. What are you doing? I'm following Sorrow's footprints. I have to bring him back. Grandpa wants him to be the new story speaker. Wow! 
then you're gonna need my sniffer so you can find him fast. <laughs> Got him! Then let's go. He went into the fast water. Wow. It looks big. Maybe to us, but Sorrow's a full grown long neck. He could just walk across. Maybe we can walk across, too. See? It's not that deep. Whoa! <laughs> I think it might just be a little too deep for me to walk across. Hmm. It might not be too deep for me. See? Can I get a ride? Sure. Hop on. Thanks. Now just keep going straight. <laughs> A big long neck like Sorrow probably just stepped right over this ledge. <laughs> Too high for me. Almost! Eh, almost! Not quite. But maybe a whole pile of rocks will help us climb over. <laughs> Too bad Sarah's not here. She's really good at pushing things around. Do it. Let's give it a try. <laughs> yeah, it worked, little foot. We make a pretty good team, Chomper. Yeah, we do. <laughs> now let's go try to catch up with Sorrow. Getting stronger. <sighs> Come on, little foot. I'm coming, I'm coming. See? There he is. Little foot? Chomper? What are you doing following me? We came to ask you to come back to the Great Valley. You need to talk to my grandpa. I don't have anything more to say to him. Why are you so mad at Littlefoot's grandpa? If he doesn't come with me to be the story speaker, all the great stories will be forgotten. Well, why can't you be the story speaker? Well, because he's the story speaker. I can't do it by myself. I can't. <laughs> Followed me. 
Those rocks are now blocking the way back to the Great Valley. Oh no, we're trapped. What are we gonna do? We will be okay. Maybe we can climb over. There's no way. We might be stuck here forever. Chomper, just take a deep breath and calm down. I don't think I can. It's dark and it's stuffy. Close your eyes. Think of a sky filled with puffies until we can find a way out of here. Did your grandpa ever tell you the story of Tall Stepper? Tall Stepper? I don't think so. Tall Stepper grew up to be a great long neck leader. But when he was young, just about your age, he learned a great lesson about being brave. Tall Stepper and his little sister were playing one day and having a great time. They were having so much fun that the wind became very jealous. The wind swirled and blew around Tall Stepper's sister and carried her into the air and up into its wind cave in a tall, tall mountain. Tall Stepper was scared to follow the wind up into its wind cave, but he knew that if he was going to save his sister, that is what he would have to do. When Tall Stepper reached the cave, the wind made a deal with him. If he could beat the wind in a race down the mountain, his sister would be released. Tall Stepper knew it would be dangerous, but he knew he had to do it to save his sister. No one had ever beaten the wind before. Tall Stepper found the courage he needed to race faster than any long neck before him. Because Tall Stepper found courage when he was afraid, he was able to beat the wind down the mountain. The wind kept his promise and brought Tall Stepper's sister back from the cave. Tall Stepper grew into a great leader. And whenever he needed to be brave, he remembered how he once had the courage to beat the wind. And sometimes, when I need courage, I think of Tall Stepper too. Wow. Thanks for telling us that story, Sorrow. Yeah. I feel better now. Little foot! Little foot! Grandpa? Little foot? Yeah! I hear him too! Grandpa? Grandpa? Little foot, me find you! Petrie! What are you doing here? Me find them! Everyone, over here! you guys find us? We followed your footprints to follow you up into the canyon. Then we heard the rock slide. We heard you yelling, too. <laughs> Sorrow, there's something I want to talk to you about. About what I said earlier? I'm sorry about that. No, no, Sorrow. 
I think you should be the new story speaker. Me? But I, I can't tell the great stories without you. But Sara, you told us a story. The one about Tall Stepper. We were really scared. But your story helped us feel a lot better. You see, Sorrow, you saw a chance for one of the great stories to teach something important at a time of need. That's what a good storyteller does. That's what a story speaker does. So, you really think I'm ready to be a story speaker? I know you are. Me too. That's right. Mm -hmm. I just wish I had told you earlier. I... I don't know what to say. <laughs> I thought story speakers always had something to say. Maybe you're right. In fact, this reminds me of the story about the very first story speaker. Her name was First Voice. One day, First Voice came upon a great cave. But when she walked into the cave, she began to hear the voice.